beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be making bao. Now bao are little steamed or baked buns that I grew up eating when I lived in California. My mom would buy them for us when we went to Chinatown. Love baos, they're Chinese little buns as I said. So I am inspired to make bao today because this past weekend my family and I went to see Incredibles 2. So this short film called Bao prefaced The Incredibles 2 and it was my favorite. I mean Incredibles 2 was really fun as well but Bao was my favorite. It is so endearingly charmingly sweet. It's also worth mentioning that this film Bao is the first female directed one by Pixar. So props up to Domi Shi and also this is her mother's recipe so I'm super excited to test it out to taste it and to make it. I'll also put the link to the recipe down below in the description. It's worth checking out because it includes Domi's original illustrations. So first things first, we're going to prepare our dough. First thing we're going to do is measure out four cups of flour into a large bowl and add three quarters of a teaspoon of yeast. Mix that together and then we're going to add 500 milliliters of water and form this into a dough. I actually used a lot less than this. I used about 350 milliliters and that might have been due to the weather. We had some thunder showers and it was pretty humid. But yeah, just add it gradually until it forms a dough. And then we're going to allow it to rest for two hours to allow the yeast to rise. Okay, so for the filling, we're gonna take one pound of pork and half of this we're going to pan saute till it's fully cooked. Then allow that to cool completely. Now we're gonna combine it back with the raw pork and we're gonna add one pound of Chinese cabbage, also known as Napa cabbage that's been finely minced, one carrot, finely minced, three green onions, chopped, one egg, one teaspoon of freshly ground ginger, one teaspoon of sesame oil, a half teaspoon of Chinese chicken bouillon. You can use the stuff they find in the supermarket, but that'll have more of a celery flavor. One teaspoon of oyster sauce, and two teaspoons of cooking wine, about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, and a bunch of freshly cracked black pepper. So we're gonna mix this until everything is well combined, and there you have your stuffing. Now it is time to shape our bows. I have a steamer basket here. This is a bamboo steamer, and I have it lined with the outside leaves of the Napa cabbage. These are the leaves that you probably wouldn't eat, but they are great for lining the bottom of the steamer so our bows don't stick. This is what Domi's mother uses in her recipe, but whenever we bought bows growing up, they were always on a little square of parchment paper. So we could use that as well. And now we have our dough. So I'm going to add a little bit of flour onto my countertop. This is a big piece of dough, so I'm gonna work with half of it at a time. So according to the instructions and what is shown in the movie itself, this is the windmill technique. You take your ball of dough and you make a hole in the middle of it and you make a ring. I'm not making dragon's beard here, no. <laughs> but if you wanna see me fail a lot, you can go check out that video. And we're gonna make a ring of dough. Here's a little bit of flour. So what we're doing is forming a nice even snake, right? We're using gravity and stretching to create a snake that is pretty even. So the advantage of forming the snake as a ring is that you don't end up with two ends that are too tapered, thus having pieces that are gonna to be too small. We have more uniformity when we create a ring. Now I'm just gonna cut this, and now we have two even snakes. So I'm gonna put this one to the side and I'm gonna keep it covered with a cloth so it doesn't dry out. Do, do. So it says in the instructions to do half inch, but I'm gonna go ahead and make mine a little bit larger. Mine are about two inches because I want an actual bun. I don't want a little like shulong bao. So, and use our pin to give it a little bit of a roll. Preliminary squash. Just a tiny bit of flour, you don't want too much. So the secret for rolling out bao is that you want to thin out the perimeter so you have a nice edge to pleat. You don't want it to be too thick. So you roll outwards just on the edge. And in the middle, you have a little puff of dough. Pick up our dough in one hand, and place our filling in the middle. Here comes the pleating. So we use our thumb and push, thumb and push. And go all the way around and grab these pleats. They make it look so easy in the videos. Actually, it's not too bad. Hey, give a little twist. <laughs> there we have a bow. I'm pretty happy about that little dumpling. That's my first dumpling ever. All right, let's try that again. So I'm gonna place that into my steamer basket. Be safe in there, okay? Don't run away. Just sit in there nicely and be 
happy, okay? We're gonna cook you up in just a minute. There's a nice heaping tablespoon. That's almost a tablespoon and a half, I would say. And now we're just going to pinch, 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 pinch. So you're just grabbing a pleat and twisting, grabbing a pleat and twisting, grabbing and twisting. All the way around. Just give a final pinch. At the end. You go be friends with your brother right there, okay? In some of the articles I read about this film, Bao, it talks about cute aggression. There's something about something being cute and you kind of want to like crush it and like harm it at the same time. Yeah, do you remember that Tiny Toons character? What was her name? Elmira? I forget. And she's like, oh, you're so cute little bunny. And she'd be like, Bleh. and she'd be like abusing it. Remember that? Remember that? No. Okay, we'll continue making dumplings. Now, pinch and squeeze. Pinch and squeeze. Pinch and squeeze. Still getting this technique down, but it's not too bad. And then give it a final twist so it seals. You, okay, you be you go sit with your other siblings, okay? You be good, you little dumpling. Now that we've shaped our bowels, we're ready to cook them. So in this large wok, I'm gonna add some boiling water here. And then we're going to take our steam basket with our dumplings in it, and place them right on top and cover them and steam them for 15 minutes. Bye, little dumplings, see you later. <laughs> and just for a little added fun, I took a couple scrap pieces of dough and added little noses to a couple of my dumplings to see if I could make a little dumpling boy. Cute, all right, we'll be back in 15 minutes. All right, here's my steamer basket and here are my beautiful bows. Oh, they look so good. Juicy, steamy, hot, gorgeous. All right, got myself a bow. And there it is. There's the stuffing completely cooked. And it looks like a bread. You can see that it has the crumb of a bread, but it's a little bit softer and stickier. All right, let's give that a taste. It's the lucky mouse. Mm. Mm. Delicious, Domi, delicious. absolutely scrumptious. The dough is soft and tender, squishy, succulent, a little bit chewy, but fully cooked. So while the bao is steaming, the outside absorbs all of the flavors of the meat. It is absolutely delicious and succulent. And the filling is absolutely scrumptious as well. You've got the sesame seed oil in there. You've got the sweet cabbage and the sweet carrots. And of course you've got the pork in there, tiny bit of ginger, but that combination of flavors is so stinking good. What I do enjoy and what I find a little bit different is the filling is not as dense. It's a little bit fluffier, which I appreciate. Sometimes when I would get these type of, of baos, it would be kind of like a meatball inside and kind of separate from the bread. But this has a little bit of crumb to it, which I really actually like. And I like the fact that you can see the carrots and the cabbage in there too. Nice little bit of color. Grumptious. Like most baked goods, baos are best eaten the day of. They can be stored in the freezer. My mom used to wrap these up in little sandwich bags and put them in the freezer. And you can re-warm them in the toaster oven, or in this case, re-steam them. So let's take off the lid. And there are my bows. Look at my one with the little face. Oh, isn't he sweet? Look, he turned out so cute. Look at him. Dee! I am so pleased. Look how stinking cute this is. Hello. There is my little bow boy. Absolutely delicious and sweet and cute. My boy is actually still in school, so I'm going to save this until he comes home from school so he can see how my little bow boy turned out. <laughs> So there you have it, homemade steamed baos. I hope you try this recipe. It's a delicious one and relatively simple to make. 
If you do, please share them with me via social media. I want to see your beautiful results. If you make a little bow boy, I want to see that as well. And big thanks to Domi's mom for sharing her recipe. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media so you can see what I'm up to. And I shall see you in my next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. <laughs>